Hello. Hello, everybody. I'd just like to apologise for your handsome and Paul Kelly. We've got a prominent ex speaker, but unfortunately, he had another appointment. So, Paul hasn't got a lot in his diary, so he did in quite nice. <laughs> Right, everybody. Uh, my name's John Bowler, and I run the John Bowler Group. And John's asked me to talk on the business and myself. Um, we're having dinner last night, and somebody came up to me and said, "What are you doing now, John?" Because I normally don't go to poultry functions. And I said, "I don't know what I'm doing here, really." To tell you the truth, I think it's something to do with that John Gretson's persuasive tongue. So I sat six hours in the car, coming up and six hours back, and uh, it's very difficult to say no to John, especially when it's done so much for our industry. So I'm here, and some people actually say, does John Bowler exist? Because we never see him. So Mr. Edison's done incredibly well. So I will do my talk. I'm not as polished as the other speakers, but I will do my best. First of all, I'd just like to say what a complete privilege it is and sheer pleasure for you to have the opportunity to listen to me. <laughs> right, what we do, we're famous for free range eggs. We operate a free range egg franchise. A lot of people really don't understand what we do, so I'll start from the beginning. We set people up in free range egg production that have had no previous experience. They're the sort of people we like. We don't like people with experience that come in our operation. And we never really take anybody on from the trade to produce eggs for us. What we do to start with, we do viability. We employ a bank manager full time and also another person in a similar role to do cash flows, projections, etc. And then we look at that and then we see if we're going to go forward. We do turn a lot of people down, despite what people think, and it's quite frightening. We only turn them down because the business is not viable. But somehow, a lot of these have finished up in the industry, supplying another packer, and that concerns me greatly. <coughs> so, we've only taken on really viable businesses, and it's really proven to be a great asset during these extreme bad times we've had. So what do we do after that? We organise the finance, if they want us to, we negotiate with the bank, and that's quite an interesting exercise, and we do get good deals. People think we get, they get good deals, but we get really good deals. And then we go onto the site, we clear the site, we put the base down, we do all the infrastructure, water and electricity, and then we pop the shed up, put the equipment in, supply the pullets, supply the feed, buy back all the eggs, buy back all the end of lay hens, and then we give them a Bible. Every query that's been brought up in the past, we put it into our manual with all the different headings. We provide field support and guidance, and above all, we produce a, we operate, offer a very comprehensive costing service. Because we set people up in business, not to produce eggs, but to make money. And there's a fine difference and we, not me necessarily these days, but we are totally aware of, aware of our costs or of producers' costs. So that's what we do on the free range side. Uh, we also are involved with wind and energy, wind and solar. We developed into this about two years ago, and uh, it's been very, very interesting journey on the way, and now it's uh, really starting to earn money after hemorrhaging money for quite a considerable time. Both people think I'm a very clever entrepreneur. I'd like to think I am, but it's not difficult to be successful in a business that's growing. If you're swimming with the tide, you can cover a lot of distance very quickly. If you're with a business where you're swimming against the tide, you've got to be good to stand still. 